Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at these older generation AMD processors, the uh, Ryzen 7 over here and the Ryzen 5 processors, specifically looking at the actual 1700s, which would be a bigger box because uh, comes with a cooler more like this one and then the Ryzen 5 1600 as those are fantastic values right now and it's the number one reason I would still recommend even when we're getting this close to launching the Ryzen 3000 series of processors which is looking like the rumors of July are starting to sort of hold some water so hopefully early July so this summer we'll be seeing the new generation but if you don't have a computer right now, if you are just working with nothing and you want to build, I think you're gonna have a really hard time, even once the new processors launch, of matching the value you can get out of the current generation Ryzen processors, or better yet, the first generation Ryzen processors. So if you don't have a system and you're trying to get into PC gaming, there actually might not be much reason to wait until July because you're just wasting time and these things are dirt cheap right now. So let's work our way through some of the better values that the first generation of Ryzen processors has to offer. And we're gonna start with sort of the lower end. Maybe you're looking for a very budget friendly gaming PC build. So you're actually gonna be throwing out the R7 and R5 processors, put those off to the side and take a look at the Ryzen 3 1200 right now, which the thing to keep in mind with all of these processors, and it's the reason I'd recommend a Ryzen 3 1200 over a 1300X, unless you're gonna get them at a very, very similar price, is that they all overclock. So you're gonna be able to get your 1200 up to uh, better than the clock values of the 1300X out of the box and very near the absolute max clock values you're gonna see on a 1300X. Now, theoretically, the 1300X does have a better binning, but uh, the real world clock speed differences are very minimal. So I would go for the 1200 unless you are gonna see some savings or uh, rather not savings, but unless you're gonna be able to get the 1300X at a very near price point, like within $5 or so. So a 1200 right now is just $70. Now, if AMD follows the pattern they've had with their last two generation of Ryzen processors, we won't even see Ryzen 3 processors out of the gate. With the first generation of processors, we saw the Ryzen 7 launch first, then the Ryzen 5 down the road, and then finally the Ryzen 3 processors. And we don't really know what AMD is gonna go with this time around, but I would suspect at best a similar situation where we go Ryzen 7, then Ryzen 5, or maybe even just exclusively starting with Ryzen 7, but I don't expect to see the uh, Ryzen 3 processors if they exist for this generation of uh, CPUs, I don't expect to see them at launch anyways in July. So you would be sort of relegated then if you're looking for a new AMD processor to be stuck on Ryzen 7 or maybe even Ryzen 5 as an option, but you can still get these quad core Ryzen 3 1200s at a great price, just $70. And the great thing about this platform, and it's the thing that I would just harp on over and over, is if you get yourself a B450 board, because the rumor right now is that B350 almost definitely won't be able to work with the third generation of Ryzen processors and it even sounds like maybe X370 won't though that's still just a rumor and really we have to operate with the information at hand but B450 should be good so you should be able to use a B450 board with a Ryzen 3000 generation processor so if you go ahead and get the Ryzen 3 1200 now get yourself set up with your base rig you just have to drop in a new CPU down the road. And $70 is not a huge investment. In fact, down the road, you could probably get some of that money back out of it by just selling back the CPU. Not only that, but if we look at motherboards right now, this is one of the better cheap B450 boards that I could find. You have four DIMM slots, which is something that I always look for on a budget-oriented board because you can get like uh, an eight gigabyte kit now maybe of DDR4 RAM, maybe a two by four kit, and then you can always upgrade to 16 gigabytes by just adding two DIMMs down the road. Though with as cheap as memory prices are right now, you actually might be better served just getting the 16 gigabytes now because we don't know what memory prices will do down the road and right now they are really cheap. So if it were me, I would go ahead and make the investment to get to 16 gigabytes because that's gonna be good for the foreseeable future on any gaming PC. And in fact, you can get by with eight gigabytes still if you're really trying to cut the budget as much as possible. But the upgrade cost to 16 gigabytes just isn't that much right now. So that's kind of my recommendation. But that's just one more level of why you should be building now if you're stuck without a gaming PC at all is you get great value out of the CPU, out of the motherboard pricing right now for AMD, but also 
SSD storage and the uh, RAM that you're gonna be buying is uber cheap right now. In fact, it's some of the best prices I've ever seen, so I don't think you can go wrong there. So now moving away from the budget side of things, which almost certainly won't be challenged at all by the new processors this summer from AMD, but if you're looking more towards the mid-tier, I still think you can't go wrong with a Ryzen 5 1600 right now, and it's mostly because of the pricing and the trade-off that there is with gaming. Because if you're a gamer, you get most of your gaming performance out of your graphics card. I think it's actually still more valuable in this case. If you don't have a computer that you're upgrading, to go ahead and get the super cheap processor now that's six cores and 12 threads, this thing is not gonna be a significant bottleneck on most graphics cards for the foreseeable future. And let's face it, if you're looking to save some serious money by getting a Ryzen 5 1600, you're probably not looking at your RTX 2080s, 2080 Ti's, or even 1080 Ti's. You're probably more towards the mid-tier anyways, in which case, these are fantastic chips to get you up and running without really much of a bottleneck at all. Like, yes, the Ryzen processors will not run games quite as fast as an Intel processor, but with all the savings that you get by spending just $120 on Amazon right now on a Ryzen 5 1600, you can reinvest that money that you're saving into a better graphics card, which is ultimately gonna net you better performance anyways than if you get a better processor, which sure will definitely be available from both Ryzen, uh, AMD that is, on the this summer with the Ryzen 3000 series, but also with Intel currently yeah you can get better performance but you're going to be spending more for it which is where this whole argument comes from of if you don't have a gaming pc at all it's hard to beat old value with the ryzen first generation of chips and again going back to this motherboard that i already mentioned it's 70 dollars, and again you get all the checklists off of the features you get the four dims you get a couple of pcie by 16 slots you get a pcie by one slot that's above the top by 16 slot, which gives you access to both of those slots, whereas some motherboard layouts that put it right below gets blocked off by the graphics card. And then we do have heat sinks on the power delivery. So you might not get a giant overclock on the higher end processors with this motherboard, but you're gonna get a decent little overclock. And with the Ryzen 3000 series, you can drop it in as an upgrade down the road. And because of the power savings of the smaller uh, seven nanometer process, you shouldn't actually be pushing the power limits of this board too terribly much unless you're really going for a top overclock with the newer processor. So again, I'm seeing the old processors as just a great, great value, even if you're looking more towards the mid-tier, because again, take that savings you save by getting a Ryzen 5 1600 at $120, reinvest it into a better graphics card. There's really not gonna be much of a bottleneck if you're in the mid tier. And now we get on to the more upper end of things, and this is the Ryzen 7 1800X box, though I recommend the Ryzen 7 1700 because again, you get a very similar overclock with it, plus the 1700 comes with a stock cooler that you can at least get up and running on. But I've seen these things, the 1700s that is, for as cheap as $130, which is just an absolute bargain when you consider that you're getting eight cores and 16 threads that are gonna last you for several years, especially because as you get up the resolution charts, more towards 1440 and 4K, you're shifting more of the load to the GPU side of things anyways, because your CPU is still delivering the same number of frames to the GPU to render, it's just the GPU that's getting hit harder and harder. And for most games at 1080p, if you're trying to play on super high refresh rates, you're gonna still be able to hit that 120 hertz mark with a Ryzen 7 1700 if you're playing something like CSGO or most esports titles for that matter. So really, it comes down to, are you trying to save a buck and get up and running? Because if that's at all your game with your new system, then I really think that the new generation of processors won't change Ryzen as, or at least the first generation Ryzen chips as kind of the king of the budget PC right now because you can get so much CPU performance out of processors that already exist readily on the market and apparently are just not selling that great right now because they just keep getting their prices slashed. And I think it's because they're older architecture already. Whereas the second gen processors from AMD, the second gen Ryzen that is, are still somewhat expensive by comparison with very little IPC gain and not a huge clock speed uh, boost anyways. So I'm still recommending the first generation of Ryzen processors as any budget PC builders uh, sort of go-to processor lineup if you don't have a computer whatsoever. Now, if you do have a computer and you're just waiting on an upgrade, then it's absolutely worth your while to go ahead and wait and hold out until this summer just to see what AMD offers with their 3000 series. But if you're just chomping at the bit and you're just waiting on building a computer, 
you can't go wrong with these guys. And uh, at this point, to be honest, I don't know that they could lose any more resale value than they currently have uh, compared to the original start point. For, for an 1800X, for example, it was $500 when it first came out. And now I would be stunned if you could resell it for uh, $200 or much more than that. So they're already sort of at the bottom of their pricing. And at that point, you can turn around and sell them again. And they probably won't lose much more value in the near future because they're already the kings of the budget. Price to performance game if you're looking for newer parts. So that's my opinion. I want to hear from you. What do you think about old Ryzen processors? Are they worth your time to go ahead and build now with them if you're building on a, a little bit of a tighter budget and you're trying to maximize your gaming performance? Let me know down below. And of course, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.